it's 5.30 in the morning. The place, Elk Lake, Canada. The temperature barely above freezing. The team, the men's eight from the University of Victoria rowing program. They're not crazy, just dedicated athletes. All right, so on the square here this time. Many of these really rowers will represent Canada in the World Championships, which begin soon in Raunitsa in the Czech Republic. For now, they can only dream of the triumphs of their predecessors. Since the arrival of this man in Victoria in 1990, Canada has enjoyed unprecedented success at world level. Mike Spracklin is a 56-year-old Englishman who's dedicated his life to rowing. But his first professional appointment was when he became head coach of Canada's national squad. The results were astonishing. He turned merely good athletes into world beaters. He's got a funny way of uh, getting the best, the best out of everybody. And he's very quiet about things. He doesn't rant and rave and yell like some people do. He's just the fact that, you know, we, if he told us to jump off a bridge, that's what we do. If that's, he told us that we're going to win a gold medal by doing that, that's what we do. It was pretty brutal and many times. Um, just training three times every day, totally tired. But you sort of, you believed in Mike, you believed in his coaching ethic. And uh, that was what basically got us through, I think. For a long time, we were satisfied with mediocrity. When Mike came, that just wasn't good enough. There was no, uh, there was no racing to, to be in the top ten, or no racing to be in the top five, or there was, there was no racing to, to win a silver or bronze medal. There was only one reason to going to a world championships or Olympic games, and that was to win. Canada finally broke the East European dominance of rowing in 1991, winning four gold medals at the world championships. They repeated the haul at last year's Olympics, the last gold coming from the men's eight, coached by Spratlin. Well, success is, is built around psychology, you know. The, the motivation comes from um, knowing that you can achieve. And all I have to do is to show away. I have to lead and, and show them how it can be done. And that's what a coach's job's for, is to show you how it can be done. And when you can see, then you want to do more. Athletes want to be successful. It's not hard to motivate athletes, because that's what sport's all about, isn't it? It's about competition and being successful. But it's the end of an era in Canadian rowing. Most of the Olympic gold medalists have retired. Mike Spracklin has taken up a new appointment coaching the United States squad. The Canadians admit they may not be as strong at the coming World Championships. However, Spracklin's legacy lives on in the hard work and total commitment he demands of all rowers with elite potential. Okay, a little bit of a tailwind here. That means that the speed of the handle must be right on it from the catch through. Drawing it smooth and level, that's it. Straight back. Straight back. On the perfectly calm waters of a peaceful early morning, a lone sculler exemplifies the grace and beauty of the sport. But whilst elegant, sculling is, without doubt, the most difficult of all rowing disciplines to master. Sitting in a single skull has been likened to squatting on a ball bearing. The boat is less than 11 inches wide and 26 feet long. Without the balance derived from the 10-foot blades, the sculler would be a submariner. The greatest modern-day exponent of women sculling is Canada's Silken Lauman. Last year, as world champion and world cup champion, she was the overwhelming favorite to add Olympic gold to her list of achievements. Then, her whole world was shattered. On May the 16th, in Essen, Germany, Laumann's fragile boat was accidentally rammed by a pair of German rowers. The sharply pointed bow of the German's 33-foot boat smashed through the wooden side of Laumann's craft. The impact resulted in a horrendous gash, severed muscles, a broken ankle, and wood splinters to her right leg. With just two months to go to Barcelona, Silken Laumann was told her Olympic dreams were over. The story of her subsequent comeback galvanized a nation. Despite undergoing five operations in 10 days, Laumann was determined to go to the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games were 10 weeks away from my accident, and so I had a real ultimate motivator. And I felt that I had two choices. I could either listen to what the doctor said and, and you know, sort of let them pro 
prophesize my future or I could try to take control of my recovery and get better as fast as I could possibly get better. And when I decided that I was going to try to be rowing for the Olympics, I had a huge support group of doctors and people in Canada who wanted to help me get there. So it was a far more motivating way of approaching um, what could have been a, a very sad accident. By the eve of the Olympics, Lauman's lack of power in her leg and loss of training had moved her from favourite to underdog. But after two successful heats, Canada's favourite sportswoman had made it to the Olympic final. Are you ready? Go! Six finalists, the elite of women's sculling. Lauman wears heavy protection to her damaged right leg. The new favourite is Romania's Elisabetta Lipa. With just 200 metres to go, Lipa has a commanding lead. Lauman in the red boat is out of the medals in fourth. It's time for one last heroic effort. Despite the intense heat and humidity, Lauman completes the race at an astonishing 38 strokes per minute to capture third place and the bronze medal. Against all expectations, she'd won a place in Olympic history by less than a second. The Lauman story had a happy ending, and Canada finished the Games with another hoard of rowing medals. After the first day of racing, when we came away with two gold medals, the feeling was that we were unstoppable. Everybody fed off each other's energy, and um, on the final day, when all was said and done, we had four gold medals and a bronze medal, and it was, uh, it was, the feeling was electric. Silken Lauman is still recovering from her injuries and will not compete at the forthcoming World Championships. But she's vowed to return to rowing for the Atlanta Olympics, where she'll again go in search of that elusive Olympic gold medal.